Welcome back, troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglodyte's Guitar Show. Tonight, we need to talk about scams. Scammers have just been getting crazy lately, not only on Reverb, but also on YouTube, and I'm sure a whole bunch of other aspects in your life. I know I've been getting a whole bunch of spammy scam calls on my phone, too, but I wanted to make a video on this just so people are aware. So... Not just my YouTube channel, but a whole bunch of them have been getting plagued by these new spammers. So take a very recent upload here, The Trogley's Guitar Show. If you're one of the great people that leave a comment every day, you've probably received a response, something like this. Where what they're doing is they're taking the logo of whatever channel you're on, in this case mine, and they'll reply to your comment. You know, whatever it is, congratulations, you have been selected among the shortlisted winners of our previous giveaway. Contact the number above in this case. So the first time we saw these things, it was called Telegram, and no Nobody understood what Telegram was. And then I saw them saying, hey, what's at me at this number? And maybe that's still what they're trying to do, but this just might be a normal texting number at this point. But the end game for these guys is they're trying to get you to contact them through this number, and then they're going to say, hey, yeah, you won this particular guitar, you just need to pay shipping. So they're essentially trying to scam you out of about 80 bucks. So if you're ever curious what those things are, yeah, it's just a scam. It's not me. I mean, you're more than welcome to verify it with me, but I don't do giveaways. But here's where the scam gets really annoying for me, is normally I have this option on my side to report the user, which I highly suggest you all do. I can go ahead and remove the comment, but I can also hide the user from the channel, which would delete this comment and every comment they've ever left. Which thankfully this time it looks like it works, but previously when the scammers were really good and in their reply they actually talked about a guitar that I had talked about in episode or two before, those ones for some reason when I would do that, it wouldn't disappear. So that means they were doing something crazy, but I'm glad to see YouTube has at least fixed that. So yes, if you get any type of reply, unless it's from like my official account, just know I don't do giveaways on the show unless a sponsor's wanting to do one. So now let's talk about reverb scams. Be very careful shopping very early in the morning, late at night, and on the weekends on reverb because this is what has been happening. This has been going on for quite some time, but it started to become incredibly prevalent within the past couple of weeks. Why those specific times? Because you see this right over here, the reverb help me stuff? That's when reverb doesn't have anybody here to talk to. Now, reverb recently changed their help thing to this, so I don't even know if you can talk to anybody anymore. So what they do is they take photos from old listings, either on Craigslist, Kijiji, old Reverb ads, old eBay ads, sometimes even current eBay ads, and they post them up just like this. So looking at this, yeah, that's a legit 2016 Les Paul. And what they also do is they steal the description of it, so it looks like they know what they're talking about. So like this one, it's pretty basic. Guitar in excellent condition, no big traces of use. Included native case and certificate. That's not normally the words you use to describe original case, but you have a general description, right? But the next thing is where they get tricky. They list it at a price that's not too good to be true, but is still within like general resale territory. It's not priced as highly as it could be. Now, 2016 Les Paul Custom, 3000 is a pretty good deal for one of those, especially in the overseas market. I'm not saying that you can't buy one of these for 3000 it's just you don't normally see them listed for that. And that's the other aspect about these things. They're generally not a US account. That's not always the case. Sometimes they do target the US as well, but they'll put these up hoping somebody wants to snag a deal. Now, what's their end game here? Well, it could be like any of these other scam videos that I've done in the past. They might actually send you something, but it's not exactly what you think. Like they could send you a chipson. They could just send you some random package that has a tracking number to a different place in your town that has a signature. It'll show up on USPS's website as delivered in your town. And then you think, you know, your neighbor stole it or porch pirates or something. Or like in this episode, episode, they could send you something that's not a guitar at all, and then you have to prove your innocence that that is what they actually sold you. I think the reason why a lot of these target overseas is when you check out, you have to use PayPal, and PayPal doesn't always have the best customer service. And things like a tracking number that says delivered in your town is a lot of times good enough for them to decide in the seller's favor. So you gotta be careful. So this one right here, Adolph's Boutique, I'm suspicious of this listing. I mean, it could be real, so, I, so I'm not necessarily condemning this particular one. But like this one, I was very suspicious of. It was located in Barcelona, Spain. It was kind of a weird non-reverse bird. Looks like it's from the year 2002. It's got a COA and everything. 2400 is not a steal of a deal, but it's a great price. 
especially if that was a custom order with that. But this particular one got flagged and taken down. Here's one that got a little bit too crazy with the price. You know, one of these SG New Centuries, I mean, 600 bucks, that's way too good of a price. Again, especially in Germany. But you've got a real listing and real photos of a real Gibson guitar. Now, not all these listings are necessarily well done. Like this one is just <laughs> way too suspicious. Looks like some of these scammers are getting a little bit desperate. Because I was impressed at some of the pricing where it's like that perfect sweet spot. But this one, nobody's selling a 1990 Les Paul Custom for 1500 bucks. Unless maybe the headstock has been cracked and it needs to be fixed by you. Here was another one that was just way too good to be true. A 1978 Les Paul Standard for only 1050 I think I remember buying one that looked vaguely similar to this, but it had like multiple repairs on it. There was a heel repair, I think a headstock repair, all replaced parts. It was a weird guitar, and that was many years ago. You can check that one out right here, Broken Beat and Scarred. And then this darn thing really got my hopes up. A 1981 ES355, only 3,000? What a steal! I think the last one that sold was like 8,500. However, I could see somebody accidentally mislisting one of these things just thinking it's like a regular 335. So you can definitely get behind the mind of these scammers and how they're trying to deceive you with a price that's not necessarily too good to be true. Sometimes it is believable and then other times not so much. I'm sure there's a whole bunch of different groups of people making these fake lists. Things. Interesting that this 1978 has a 2018 style dress rod cover on it. Sometimes you can do a Google search of this through Google Lens or just copy and paste the image into it and you might be able to find it again. Like this particular one, I knew these were stolen photos because this is the signature style of a shop called That Rhythm Man Guitars. You can check out his website. He's got all pretty much the same stuff. He sells Les Paul Customs quite often. But again, $4,000 for a Norlin era Les Paul Custom not necessarily a steal, but in the condition of this particular one being from 1979, I really doubt that that is actually available. Now it's possible this guy bought it from him and then he's using his photos. So I was kind of scared to use this particular listing in here, but 4,000 is just way too cheap because here's that exact listing. He sold it for 5,900. So it just doesn't make sense for the person who bought it from him to sell it for only 4,000. So if you see one of these early in the morning or late at night, do everybody a favor and just report them. Mark it as may be fraudulent and let Reverb decide if they need to take that listing down or not. Like this one, sometimes they take it down right away. Other times it takes a couple of reports. And I might say, hey Trogly, did you just get like some real guy's listing taken down? Technically, it's against the rules to use non-original photos. So like you can't use Sweetwater's photos in your Reverb ad. You can't use any dealer photos or the other person who you purchased it from. Using a beauty shot here or there, yeah, Reverb's not gonna take you down for that but you definitely need the majority of them being your own original ones. But this is just all his photos. So yeah, be careful shopping online because there's scammers all over and be careful while commenting on YouTube. So if you're now leery about buying guitars online, consider shopping with the sponsor of today's episode, Sweetwater. Sweetwater has a massive campus that you can actually visit and do a whole bunch of fun activities in, but you can also shop with them online for guitars, studio and recording gear, drums and percussion, microphones, DJ equipment. They even have band and orchestra stuff now too. My favorite thing about shopping with these guys is the fact that you can actually see the instrument that you're going to buy and get detailed specs of it. So here we've got four Les Paul standards. One's 10 pounds, one's a little under nine, One's in that sweet spot around nine and a half. So if weight is important to you, they can help you there. But they also list the serial number that you're going to buy. So say, hey, your kid was just born. You want to find a guitar that has a matching serial number to his birth date. That's something you could also do on this site or just find a funny number. Or maybe you're looking for a particular wood grain. Technically, all four of these are Heritage Cherry Sunburst, but this one is abnormally bright as compared to the other ones. So you might want to choose it for that reason or avoid it for that reason. Do you like pinstripey tops or do you like really wide tops like this one i'd probably choose this but don't forget about looking at the backs of these things oh my goodness look at that one that's got some sweet figuring going on and hey if that's not enough for you they also do monthly gear giveaways you can click that link in the description to enter to win any of these great items thank you to sweetwater for sponsoring tonight's episode now let's look at a few more guitars it's looking like the Silverburst Adam Jones standards are going to be coming out soon. And this person just made an early listing here. Now, I doubt they're actually going to be $7,000. I mean, my guess, probably around the Slash Les Paul standards, $3,000. But I know a lot of dealers have these, so it must be very close to these things coming out. So if you've been waiting for one of these, make sure you grab one before you have to wait forever for him to come back out. I'm sure we'll get a review and demo, even though Adam Jones videos, they just 
don't do that well anymore. I think people are kind of tired of Silver Burst. I get it, but this is standard format. We haven't had a teardrop shape, Les Paul standard in the Silver Burst finish in a long time. So it's very cool in that aspect. And since we've got a little bit of time left tonight, let's check this one out. So this is a 2010 Les Paul Standard in a multicolored sparkle. It's listed for 7,500 bucks, which might seem kind of crazy for just a custom shop standard. I mean, you gotta remember, those aren't a reissue of any type, like an R9 in this finish. Oh yeah, that would sell for that and even more. But custom shop standards, they're just a little bit different. But this one, they've got that super multi-chromatic sparkle all over this guitar. It's all over the back, it's on the sides, it's on the neck, it's on the face of the guitar. And that's right, you weren't hallucinating, it's also on the face of the headstock. Now that is incredibly rare for this era of guitar. Nowadays that we have the mod collection and demo shop, they can do stuff like this all the time. So it's not necessarily that special anymore. But in 2010, when this thing was made, having a matching headstock Les Paul standard is just quite crazy. No pick guard on this one at all, but this one would really come to life in person because you've got some purple, you've got some blue, you've got some yellow. I'm sure there's some green hues in there as well. You can check out the Modern Flying V Ebony Prism video to kind of understand what you would see here. A little bit, anyways. I mean, this is what I thought Ebony Prism was originally going to look like, or at least kind of similar. But you can pick this up from Papa Guitars, Amps and Gear on Reverb. But all right, troglodytes, I hope you enjoyed tonight's episode. Stay safe out there, and we will catch you tomorrow on the next one. Take care. We are calling about your Gibson Guitars extended warranty. Your warranty is about to expire. Please give us money so we can scam you blah blah.